Hey guys, today I want to answer a question. Someone wanted to know, if I get cancer, can I just consume cruciferous? Do I need chemo? So I just want to cover this topic. Now this information I'm going to talk about is not to replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before doing anything, okay? I'm just trying to increase your awareness on a couple things about cancer. Number one, in order for you to get cancer, you have to first have damage within the mitochondria. Some type of mutation or alteration in the DNA triggered by something. They're called carcinogens, okay? If you take a look at this book right here, the book on toxicology, which is a study of poisons, it goes through all the different chemicals. There's quite a few of them in our environment and all the different diseases and different types of cancer that it can be related to. And then we have, this is by the World Health Organization talking about endocrine disruptors. These are the pesticides, the insecticides, the herbicides, the fungicides in the environment and how they can affect not just cancer, but other diseases as well, mainly within the endocrine system. Um, this is a combination between animal studies and human studies. Very interesting data. Now, what I wanted to bring your awareness up is chemotherapy. I don't know if you realize this, but the contribution of chemotherapy for a five-year survival rate is only 2.1%. Now, let's just take, for example, bladder cancer. Normally, you have a 78% chance of surviving five years. Chemo adds another 2.1%. That is so, so insignificant. Not to mention all the side effects and all the other damages for secondary infections and the suppression of the immune system. Now, lung cancer has a 56% survival rate um, up to five years, and chemo would add another 2.1%. It's just very, very insignificant. A lot of people don't realize that. And I'm not recommending not to take chemo or to take it. I'm just giving you the data of the actual improvement. It's very, very small. But what I want to talk about and concentrate on is this right here, cruciferous vegetables. Now, will cruciferous cure your cancer? I have no idea. But as for a preventative thing, I think it's very, very powerful. You wouldn't necessarily take chemo to prevent cancer, right? But cruciferous, definitely. There are many different types of cruciferous vegetables. Bok choy, kale, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, radish, etc. And it's very difficult to determine the risk-lowering effects of cruciferous simply because there are so many other variables. What else is the person eating? What environment they're in? What's the person's history? So it's very, very difficult to determine that. But in general, cruciferous does decrease the risk of certain types of cancer. And it does this through different effects. There's basically six different things that cruciferous can do for a person. Number one, it has the potential to detoxify carcinogens. And I'm talking about the chemicals in the environment. It's almost impossible not to be exposed by these chemicals through your food, the environment, the grass that you walk on the golf course that you play golf on. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. The cool thing is that cruciferous can dismantle these through the liver. Now you have certain mechanisms and enzymes already in your body that can do this, but consuming cruciferous vegetables can also give you additional enzymes to help turn poisons into harmless particles. It's called phase one, phase two detoxification. So that's number one. Number two, it can induce or trigger apoptosis. What does that mean? Apoptosis is a situation where your cells commit suicide. So if a cell becomes damaged, there's a certain mechanism where it can actually kill itself. And this way you can get rid of damaged cells that have some alteration uh, that can create problems. So this is a good thing. And your body does this millions of times a day, okay? But with cancer cells, they lose the ability to self-destruct. So you have this alteration that keeps growing, 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 growing. Cruciferous will help cancer cells commit suicide. That's really powerful. Cruciferous has a lot of antioxidants, phytonutrients, that actually will help clean up the free radicals that are created from all these, these chemicals in the environment. So that's a, a very powerful thing right here. Also, cruciferous has the ability to balance out estrogen, not necessarily increasing the volume of total estrogen, but what it can do, it can balance the ratios, reducing the bad harmful estrogens and increasing the good ones. 
Next thing it can do, and this is really, really cool, it has the ability to protect against DNA mutations and damage. Mutation means a sudden change within this lifetime, genetically. Okay, so these chemicals can alter your genes. It's nothing to do with being passed down by your parents, but let's say you're exposed to a certain chemical, and all of a sudden they start creating all sorts of dysfunctions in your body. So cruciferous can protect against this alteration, which is very, very powerful. And lastly, it can decrease something called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is where these blood vessels start feeding the tumor, okay, or the cancer. Cruciferous has the ability to inhibit this new circulation or blood flow to this tumor and cancer, and that's very, very powerful as well. So if you combine consuming some cruciferous vegetables on a regular basis, okay, with healthy keto, that drops the sugar that feeds cancer, and do intermittent fasting and periodic prolonged fasting, I think that will be the ultimate strategy to help you avoid cancer in the future. Thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.